Our next to introduce our third speaker is Dr. Peter Mtua. He says his mother's superpower was the ability to cook. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is the one superpower that is highly underrated. <laughs> Over to you, Dr. Peter Mtua. The only reason I was able to say that is because I know my lovely wife is not going to be on this forum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one is going to tell on me unless some of you will snitch. And then they, but I'll catch up with you. I've counted everyone. I've taken a screenshot. If this news leaks, I'm coming for you. Momani Nyaboni is a is she is delivering her advanced communicator goals. This is a place where the CCs and the ACs and the, all lead to the, uh, the climax of this whole program in terms of the speaking places is the advanced community code and there are special manuals for that purpose. And the manual she has spoken, she's delivered from today is an oratorical speech. And there's a background to this speech and I'm going to read the background so that then I introduce Momani Nyaboni. And the background to the speech is this. Julia Gillard is an Amer Australian former pol politician who served as the 27th Prime Minister of Australia. She was the leader of the Australian Labour Party from 2010 to 2013. For the three years that, and three days that she was the Prime Minister of Australia, people debated the fit of her jackets, mm -hmm. the size of her bottom, the tone of her voice, the legitimacy of her rule, and whether she had chosen to be deliber deliberately barren. The sexism was visceral and often grotesque. There were placards crying, bitch, ditch the witch. Toys designed for dogs that encourage them to chew on the fleshier parts of her anatomy. And a menu offering the Julia Gillard Kentucky Fried Quail, small breasts, huge thighs, and a big red box. Prior to her speech, Julia Gillard had received backlash from the American media, from Australian media and members of an official opposition party that targeted her gender. Her personal life also faced scrutiny, particularly as she was unmarried and childless. The opposition leader at that time, Tony Abbott, had risen in Parliament, had risen in Parliament with a motion to have Peter Slipper removed as Speaker over the crude and sexist texts that Peter Slipper had sent to, to an aide. Julia Gillard's address to Parliament in response to the motion to have Peter Slipper removed as Speaker has been celebrated in the public as the most unforgettable moment of Australian TV history. Today we have that speech truncated and read to us by none other than Mumani Nyaboni. And the title of the speech is Double Standards, Mumani Nyaboni, Double Mumani Nyaboni, Double Standards. Warm round of applause. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker and I rise to oppose the motion moved by the leader of opposition. And in so doing, I say to the leader of opposition, I will not be lectured about sexism and misogyny by this man. I will not. The leader of the opposition says that people who hold sexist views and who are misogynist are not appropriate for high office. Well, I hope the leader of opposition has got a piece of paper and is writing out his resignation because if he wants to know what misogyny looks like in modern Australia, he does not need a motion in parliament. He needs a mirror. That's what he needs. Let go through the opposition leaders repulsive double standards when it comes to misogyny and sexism we are now supposed to take seriously that the leader of the opposition is offended by mr mutua's text messages when this leader of opposition has said in the past when he was minister in this government not when he was a student not when he was in high school when he was a minister in government he said and i quote in a discussion with honorable tinega about women being underrepresented in institution of power in australia if it's true that men have more power generally speaking than women 
Is that a bad thing? The discussion ensued and the Honorable Bruna said, I want my daughter to have as much opportunity as my son. To which the leader of opposition said, Yeah, I completely agree. But what if men are by physiology or temperament more adapted to exercise authority or to issue command? Then ensued another discussion about women's role in modern society. And Honorable Benson said, I think it's very hard to deny that there is an underrepresentation of women. To which the leader of opposition said, Now, oh, you, there is an assumption that this is a bad thing. <gasps> this is the man from whom we are supposed to take lectures about sexism. I was offended personally when the leader of opposition as Minister of Health said, and I quote, abortion is the easy way out. I was very personally offended by those comments. You said that in March 2004, I suggest you check the records. I was offended too by the sexism, by the misogyny of the leader of the opposition cut calling across this table at me as I sit here as prime minister. He said, if the prime minister wants to politically speaking make an honest woman of herself, something that would never have been said to any man sitting in this chair. I was offended when the leader of opposition went outside in front of parliament and stood next to a sign that said, ditch the witch. I was offended when the leader of the opposition stood right next to a sign that described me as a man's bitch. I was offended by those things. Misogyny, sexism, every day from this leader of opposition. And now, the leader of opposition wants to be taken seriously. Apparently, he's woken up after this track record and all these statements. He has woken up and he's gone, oh dear, there's this thing called sexism. Oh my God, there's this thing called misogyny. Now, who's one of them? Oh, the speaker must be, hey, because that suits my political purpose. He doesn't turn a hair about his past statements doesn't walk into this parliament and apologize to the women of Australia. He doesn't walk into this parliament and apologize to me for the things that have come out of his mouth. But now he seeks to use this as a battering ram against somebody else. Well, this kind of hypocrisy must not be tolerated which is why this motion from the leader of opposition should not be taken seriously. On the conduct of Mr. Mutua and on the text messages that are in public domain, I have seen press reports about those text messages. I am offended by their content. I am offended by their content because I am always, always offended by sexism. I am offended by their content because I am always offended by statements that are anti-women. I am offended by those things in the same way I have been offended by the things that the leader of opposition has said. And no doubt he will continue to say those things in the future because if this, to, if, if, if this today was an exhibition of his feminine side, well, I don't think we've got much to look forward to in terms of changed conduct. I am offended by those text messages, yes. But I also believe in terms of this parliament making a decision about the speaker, that this parliament should recognize that there is a court process, a case in court already. The judge has reserved this decision that having waited for a number of months for the legal matters surrounding Mr. Slipper to come to a conclusion, this parliament should wait to see that conclusion. I believe that is the appropriate path forward. 
and that the people will have an opportunity to make up their minds with the fullest information available to them. What, Mr. Speaker, I will never stand for is the leader of opposition coming to this place and peddling a double standard. Peddling a standard for Mr. Mutua, he would never set for himself. Peddling a standard for Mr. Mutua, he has not set for other members of his front bench. The leader of the opposition says do something. Well, he could do something himself if he wants to deal with sexism in parliament. He could change his behavior. He could apologize for all his past mistakes. He could apologize for all his past statements. He could change a standard himself if he sought to do so. But we will not see any of that from the leader of opposition because on this question, he is... in of change, incapable of change. It's an inestimable double standards should not rule this parliament. Good sense, common sense, proper process is what should rule this parliament. That's what I believe is the path forward for this parliament. Not this kind of double standard and political game playing imposed by the the leader of opposition now looking at his watch because apparently a woman has spoken too long and on that basis mr speaker because of the leader of the opposition's motivation this parliament today should reject this motion and the leader of the opposition should think seriously about the role of women in public life and in australian society because we are entitled to a better standard than this. Toastmas of the day. Hey, wow. Thank you so much, Momani, Madam Prime Minister. I think our Senatorial Assembly or our National Assembly needs a kind of energy and insight. <laughs> When it comes to debating affairs <laughs> in the assembly. When I asked Mumani about her mother's superpower, she told me this. I don't know of a more resilient woman than my mother. Her husband, my father, was involved in a tragic accident one year into their marriage. He suffered brain damage and became insane. My mother was still a young bride. She should have left him and remarried. But she stayed, raised these children single-handedly and asked him till his death 14 years later. She truly honors her and I must say, your mother must be one very proud person because of the person that you have become today. So thank you so much Fumaji for your very insightful and very uh, high energy presentation. To evaluate our third speaker is Dr. Peter Mutua. Dr. Peter Mutua also happens to be one of the Toastmasters, I think, district leaders around. A very, a very influential individual. I was in a past meeting and they were asking who their most, their most inspiring Toastmasters leader is. And one of the guys said it's Dr. Peter Mutua. So you guys are in the presence of royalty right here. <laughs> When I asked Peter Mtua what's the most important life skill her mother taught him, he says it is resilience and don't go down easy. Over to you, Dr. Peter Mtua. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests. I have stood because it seems that the people who mistake the, the fact that I'm sitting down with the fact that I'm weak, I am not weak, I tell you. I even have a lectern in the house, a lectern. No woman in the house that I know of has a lectern in the house. No woman. Hmm. So let it be known. Let it be known and let all of you see me and I wish I take measure to measure with, so to measure the dimensions that you agree on this is. But having said that, I'm very honored 
to speak at this meeting, particularly because I studied in Jaikirat. And one of the things that I wished would have been there was the ability, the teaching of people to speak in public. Because as a management trainee in an engineering firm, the most, the most sorely missed skill that I had was that of communicating and leadership. And you know, you can pass your engineering exams, but if you cannot explain these concepts to the people you're working with, if you cannot lead, then you cannot be effective. So you're on to the right track, and I want to encourage you to take this seriously and invest in it. But having said that, that was not about, the evaluation is not about JQ, it's about more money. She's on her way to the ACG, the Advanced Community, Community Code, which is her only barrier to the uh, distinguished Toastmaster. And it has taken a lot of fighting with this young woman here. And you know she's a lawyer. And arguments about why it is that it is not necessary for me to do. After all, I am a good communicator. Why should I go, go and do all these education programs? So for her to have arrived here is a great feat. The beauty about this manual is that the directions on what I'm supposed to do are very clear. So we're just going to go question by question. Did the speaker review the original speaker's intelligence, original speaker intelligently and significantly and with adequate feeling? Yes. I am convinced that Momani feels very strongly about this, this issue. She's very vocal about it, obviously. And she excellently selected a topic that is not normally and ordinarily addressed, especially in a Toastmasters meeting, because I've never heard about this speech before. Was the speaker comfortable with the project? Yes, she was. Much as she was reading from a script, and the, the reading is obvious because, again, if your speech is going to be that long, you're going to need to read it. You, go, you don't generally memorize it. But this topic was excellently selected. Was she comfortable with the speech? Yes, she was. Did she establish rapport with the audience? Yes, she did. Eye contact was excellent, and she did that using various devices, and she'll tell you about it when, if you, when and if you ask her. Did she inspire us? Yes, that is certainly so, because this is an issue that we need to address very carefully, because Jekyll is a bit of a, a different situation where the ratios of men to women do not permit this kind of misogyny to take root or to be exercised, but there are other places where this thing happens. What could she have done differently? And herein lies the challenge. And I want you to understand very clearly, the evaluation in a Toastmasters meeting is subjective. It depends on me, what I saw from where I was sitting and what I considered valuable. So I thought, that Momani gave a little too much emphasis onto the body language and the gestures, which the manual encouraged her to do. But it's, in my view, a, a powerful oratorical speech should be able to communicate clearly without being aided by a lot of language and a lot of, of, <clears throat> of emphasis in terms of facial expressions. And those are helpful, but in terms of driving the point home, what I found is that the more powerful the rhetoric is, the more easily people should be able to understand it and grasp it and be able to be inspired by it. Because in this speech, it is imagined that some people will hear on the radio, so they might not get to see you make all the gestures, but the power, power and the feeling must come through whether or not it's so you deliver. What did I like about the presentation? It speaks about a very important part of history and a struggle that developed countries have that we don't tend to imagine that they have as de developing countries. Mumani, I think you did an awesome job. You, you've done well, you, you, you nailed it, you nailed the delivery, you nailed the lighting. Well done, keep going strong and see you on the side of DTM, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you so much, Dr. Peter Mtua. Today's evaluators are on fire. I mean, I cannot take anything away from Mr. Mtua's evaluation. That was, that was really good. Thank you so much.